Well, hello everyone. I'm Deb and this is DB Designs and Sewing Australia. Today I'm not going to be talking about sewing. I'm going to be talking about my trip to Tassie. So it's very short because I'm really not very good at taking videos when we're out on the road and doing things. My girlfriend actually took many more photos than I did, but here I go anyway. Now Tasmania is a state in Australia and it's down the very bottom of Australia and it's a separate island. So we had to catch a boat. We took the car across on the boat and we had a wonderful time. I will insert pictures as we go. So I don't exactly know what all of the pictures are. So I will be putting um, a few words under them to explain it. Now, when you go on the ship, you actually land in Devonport, which is their port. And we had a great time on the ship. I think the ship left at 6.30. We were boarding by quarter past four and we were up on deck having our first wine by five o'clock. After that, we watched the ship um, depart and we had some dinner and then we played cards. So we stayed upstairs in the lounge area and play 500. We went to bed on the first day at about probably at about 10.30, so we hadn't gone through the heads yet, which is when it can get rough. Wasn't too rough. I actually don't mind it when it's rough, it rocks you to sleep. So we have a cabin with beds in it, so we actually sleep and it's an overnight trip, not a day trip. Beautiful food, beautiful food on the um, Spirit of Tasmania. There are two new ships being built. They were supposed to be released in October this year, but I think it's now January or February next year. Although you do have to travel to Geelong now to catch the ship. You used to catch it from Port Melbourne, which was much closer for us, but now you've got to travel to Geelong. But I must say that port was designed for those ships and the port is in an industrial area and it was purpose built. So very good at getting on and off the ship with your vehicle. And once you're in there, they tell you you can leave your car, You we stupidly walked the stairs and thought, my girlfriend goes, let's just go in the stairs because it's only two flights. Well, it was seven flights of stairs with hand luggage. So because it's only an one overnight stay on the ship, we just take some hand luggage, not your usual luggage. So we did that, we're exhausted by the time we got up there, ready for a drink, I think. And we had a wonderful time on the ship. It's really lovely and very, very lovely staff on there both times we've traveled to Tasmania last year and this year. So we land in Devonport and the first place we go to is Deloraine. Well, we stayed, I think three nights in Deloraine in a beautiful cottage. I will insert some photos. Had a beautiful Kunara heater. And um, there's generally we go out for lunch during the day and then we're home to have tea at home and we cook something for tea at home. That way you don't have to drive. The weather was exceptional and anybody who's living in Melbourne particularly, probably South Australia as well, knows how good the weather has been in the last four weeks and the weather was lovely. I think I only wore my hat once and the rest of the time, very, very sunny days. Only when we went to Cradle Mountain did we have any rain except for some rain overnight in some places. So our first stop was Deloraine. Now Deloraine is a lovely little town. We've stayed there before. We've stayed at a pub there before. And it's a very artsy, craftsy place. So they actually have a vintage sewing machine exhibition there as well. I think I took some photos of that, hopefully. And I will insert those. So the next place we stayed after that was West Kentage. And that was a farm stay. So the people live in like a big cabin, people that own the property, and then there's two more cabins. And we're in one of those, very, very nice, very new and very well appointed, beautiful appliances and all that sort of thing. And you have a deck um, out the back that looks over Mount Roland. Now, none of these cabins are joined together, so you've got all your privacy, same as having a house. and lovely deck, beautiful views, and they had chooks and sheep and a lovely dog that came and visited us all the time. 
and that was a really fabulous stay. Uh, from West Kentish, you can go out to a lot of different places. Now, when we're in West Kentish, we went for a day trip to Cradle Mountain, which was wonderful. The weather was quite good. When we got actually into Cradle Mountain, it was um, starting to fog over, but it was actually really, really beautiful up there. Um, and then it started to rain a little bit when we were up there because you go right up the top of the mountain and then it's like an... Well, it's inside a volcano basically and it's got beautiful views and beautiful walks and then my girlfriend said it's raining I don't want to be in this bit so we spoke to the bus driver because you actually get a bus from like the information center where you pay to go and I think it's only $22 and that includes the bus trip and you can stay there all day if you want to um, and so he said you girls would really like to go on the Enchanted Walk. It's halfway down the mountain. I'm going to be going past there and I'll tell you where to get off. And if you follow the directions, you'll be able to go. Well, it was absolutely beautiful. It really was an enchanted forest. All the moss all over the trees. I'll insert a whole lot of photos. We saw so many wombats when we were on that walk. And it was really just delightful. And it's on a boardwalk. We did the Enchanted Walk and that was absolutely beautiful. That was one of the highlights of the trip. Now, the next place we went to was called Live in the Dream and that's actually in Southport, which is one of the furthest points you can get in Tasmania. So really, it's down near where, the, where Tasmania finishes. So next stop is the Antarctic. So... That was one of the only times I actually wore my hat when we went down for our big walk down to see the bronze whale. Um, it's where they used to do a lot of whaling. We had a great time down there, lots of walking down there. And, and we went to a beautiful pub there. It's a pub, it's a general store, it's a bottle shop. It's a post office, it's everything you need, and it's the only thing there. But really, really beautiful down there, absolutely beautiful. And that was a great house. That was a two-story house and had fabulous heating. All of these places, because even though the weather was great, still was getting quite cold at night, but really, really comfortable house. And, and after we left Southport, we went to Battery Point, which is in Hobart, and it's really... It's the really posh part of Hobart, put it that way. Absolutely beautiful two-storey Victorian style house that has all been renovated. Absolutely magnificent. And it's just a short walk to Salamanca Market. So you do need to be a bit of a billy goat to be able to walk up and down the hills because it is on the side of the hill. So, so many of the beautiful homes there have views. So we went to Salamanca Market and spent our money. And we also popped up to Mount Wellington. Now, last year when we tried to go to Mount Wellington, we did make it up to the top, but it was actually sleeting sideways and we could only get out of one side of the car because you couldn't open the door. The wind was so strong. But this time it was absolutely beautiful and it's got a big viewing point there. And it's absolutely beautiful. You can look over all of Hobart. Absolutely, we had a great time there. Of course, we went to many pubs and all that sort of thing and out on little day trips here and there. Had a wonderful time in Battery Point. And after we'd been to Battery Point, we went to River's Edge Retreat, which was in Orford. River's Edge Retreat, we stayed right on the river, had beautiful views of the river, has its own dock and all that type of thing. We didn't have a boat, so didn't need to use that. And we did a few day trips out from River's Edge Retreat. We went to, we went to Cascades Female Factory. Now, what that is, it's a, it's a historical site. It's actually a World Heritage Site. And it's all about the convicts, remembering that, well, Australia is 
where all of the convicts were sent, but Tasmania in particular is the whole place was a convict settlement. And all of those little islands off everywhere were, um, were just full of convicts. And it was really just all the history about how prisoners were treated, what you got sent to prison for. If you stole a hanky, you've got 14 years in prison. I must admit, Cascades Female Factory is very, very well done. If you're ever in Tasmania, it certainly is a great World Heritage site to visit. It does still have some, a few of the old original buildings in there, and then there's some that are replicas. They seem to have a lot of photos, and I don't think they're artists' impressions. I think they are actual photos. And also from River's Edge Retreat, we went to Mariah Island. Mariah Island is just beautiful. Has a lot of wombats and a lot of wildlife there. All of the wildlife's very, very tame. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful place. And that's a boat. So you catch a boat across to uh, Mariah Island and spend the day there. It's just lovely. And after that, we went to Campbelltown. Now, Campbelltown was when we started to head back up the East Coast. And it's a very, very small place. This time we stayed in very, very small places. And Campbelltown, aren't they lucky? It was next door to the pub. So we only went there to the pub once for dinner. And it was a beautiful old farmhouse but it's very very comfortable it had a fantastic kunara and the people who own it live next door it's five acres of um vegetable garden so much rhubarb huge amount of rhubarb um and they had chickens and they had ducks and you're allowed in all the enclosures you're allowed to feed all the animals and it was really really lovely and very nice hosts. They were absolutely great. Anything you wanted, they'd do for you. So Campbelltown was a beautiful, beautiful place. It only has a population of like 460 people, so a very small place, but still absolutely beautiful. And the last place we went to was St. Helens. And St. Helens is back up the top. I guess you'd be calling it northeast of Tasmania. Still on the coast, you're all, we mainly stuck to the coast, and Campbelltown's not really, it's slightly inland, but remembering it's Tasmania, so nothing's very far away. And from St. Helens, we went to St. Columbia Falls, which was just lovely, and that was a very nice walk. It said it was 20 minutes, but I think it was 35 minutes, quite frankly, unless you're running. And then we went for lunch to a place called Pub in the Paddock. And Pub in the Paddock, Paddock is a pub that's out in the middle of acres and acres of land. And its claim to fame is that the pigs drink beer. And so for a gold coin donation, you can get a bottle of beer to feed the pigs. Well actually don't know how much beer is in it because they hand it to you it's already been opened it's warm and not cold which is weird in Australia and something very watery about it but the pigs seem to love it so um so we had a go at doing that And the last place we went to from St. Helens was the Bay of Fires. Now, the Bay of Fires <laughs> is drunk at all. A whole you didn't get any. Is a bay that is full of rocks and the rocks are red coloured. I'll insert a whole lot of photos. And I found out that it's not called Bay of Fires because the rocks are red. And look like they've been on fire or are on fire it's actually called bay of fires because when the first settlers landed here the aboriginal people had a whole lot of fires 
built on the shoreline. So that's why it's called Bay of Fires, not because the rocks are red. And the rocks are red are from a lichen and fungi that grow on them and it turns red. So that was a really beautiful place. But we had a wonderful time there. It's very picturesque and very, very beautiful place. Absolutely stunning place. And of course, then we had to go and buy oysters and all that sort of thing that you do when you're in that sort of a place. So, and then, oh, I found a fabulous fabric shop. It was really more of a quilting shop, but I was talking to the lady and I'm expecting her to email me with her photo of her um, summer in New York dress. I was chatting to that lady for two hours in her um, beautiful fabric shop. She had never heard of Seasons of East patterns and so now she's going to be making the summer in New York dress. So I am expecting her to email me with a photo of her dress that she's made. And she in fact had never made um, indie patterns. So that's why I was with her for two hours. She had no other customers in that time. And we were just scrolling through her tablet, looking at patterns that she thinks she would like to make. So made a new friend there, bought some fabric to make Phoebe a skirt. It's going to make Phoebe a skirt in that. It's got bees on it, anything with bees on it, Phoebe will want so it's her birthday soon i've actually ordered her some labels that, that say made by phoebe on it so um so that she can sew them into anything that she makes so after that we travel back to devonport back on the ship and back home but overall we had a wonderful time and the weather was really really good to us I wore every single item of clothing that I took with me. I mainly wore my unwind hoodie, my two chasing butterflies jumpers and my Vera jumper. That was mainly what I wore. Today I'm wearing my Aria dress, which I do not like. I like the top part of it. I like it as a shirt, but I don't think I like it as a dress. I'll put a belt on, see if I would like it better, but I am seriously considering cutting this off and using it as a shirt. I just don't wear this style of shirt dress, so. I love the fabric. I wish I'd chosen a pattern where it had a facing, even though I say I hate facings. On shirts, that's a whole different thing. Or maybe I need to put another buttonhole on it so that it brings it up there. I don't really want to wear a scarf on it. I mean, it would be a good work dress if I didn't have to wear a uniform, but I can see that on the inside there. I mean, it could always attach a facing to it. I mean, and it comes right out to here. It doesn't even wrap over because it sort of wraps back on itself. So just be aware of that if you're making the Aria, Aria shirt dress. It's a nice pattern and it's a beautiful collar. It's the one where the collar and the stand are all in one. Yeah, that's, that's the one. So I, I really like it and I have done that with a few other shirts as well turned them into um, collars that have got the stand already attached to it but I can just see that anyway I will be back soon please like and subscribe when I come back I will have my bespoke box then I'll have to do another one because I finished two of my seasons of East dresses my bride comes from for her second last fitting tomorrow. Um, I'll catch up with you all then.
Bye.